Ferrari at breakfast on LBC. Call 0345 6060 973. Eight minutes before eight, let's catch up with the latest situation then concerning Ukraine and Russia and turn to Foreign Secretary Liz Truss, who joins me now. Thank you for coming on the show. I note in one of the newspapers today, Foreign Secretary, today's Times, you write that, quotes, you'll use every lever at our disposal to stop him, Putin, in his tracks. We've heard sanctions. What's next? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Nick. In response to Putin's recognition of two uh, so-called people's republics in the Donbass region, we have imposed the toughest package of sanctions that we've ever put on Russia, targeting key oligarchs close to the Kremlin, targeting banks that fund the military, but also restricting and stopping Russian government access to sovereign debt uh, in the UK markets. We have further sanctions ready to go, and we're working very closely with our international partners like the US, like the Europeans, if Putin invades Ukraine and launches a full-scale invasion. So what do you call what he's done so far? If this is What he's done so far is he's recognised these two uh, so-called people's republics. He's undermined Ukrainian sovereignty. He's said Ukraine doesn't have a right to yeah. exist. That's why he's received strong condemnation from uh, the UK and our allies. So he's not invaded, this, in your view? The, we don't have evidence that he has yet invaded what we have seen is a huge build-up of troops on the border. We've seen the recognition uh, of these two so-called republics, but we have not yet seen a full-scale invasion. If and when, and we do think it is highly likely, Nick, there is a full-scale invasion, we will hit Putin with even more tough sanctions. Right. So what do we call, what do we characterise the deployment of troops in Donbass currently then, Foreign Secretary? Well, we have not yet got evidence that Russian troops are in Donbass. You talk about further sanctions. What would they be? Well, we've already launched sanctions targeting key individuals. We were only able to do that because of new legislation we passed that said that anybody of interest in the Russian state who is propping up the Russian state, whether that's a company or an individual, would be targeted. We have more individuals. Uh, on our list who are, we are ready to sanction. We have more companies who we are ready to sanction and we have more banks uh, that we are ready to sanction. And we also have more, more ways in which we can restrict uh, Russia's access to British financial markets. As I've said, we're already putting restrictions on sovereign debt, but there are more ways in which we can restrict Russia's access to financial markets. And what's important, Nick, is we're working in collaboration with our allies across the world to make sure that Putin is getting a single message that we will inflict pain for the recognition of these two so-called republics, but we will inflict more pain in the event of a full-scale invasion. And I have to ask you, when we talk about use every lever, does that include using military levers, Foreign Secretary? We have been at the forefront of supplying military support to Ukraine. Uh, we've supplied defensive weapons, uh, we've def de supplied naval capability, we've trained up uh, Ukrainian soldiers. We continue to work with the Ukrainian government to offer them all the support we can. But it doesn't mean uh, NATO troops on the ground. What we are doing is we're strengthening the eastern flank, uh, we're putting more support into Estonia, uh, which is a key NATO ally, we're putting more support around the Black Sea. Uh, but it doesn't mean uh, NATO troops in Ukraine because Ukraine is not a member of NATO. Uh, it's affiliated, but it's not a member of NATO. So you don't see the likelihood of British troops moving into Donbass or Ukraine? No, I don't. This is about supporting the Ukrainians uh, in their determination to protect their sovereignty and territorial integrity. OK. And, and just to clarify as regard the invasion, when I spoke to your colleague Sajid Javid yesterday, he said that an invasion had effectively begun. You I don't think recognise that. What evidence would require? When would the British government say the invasion has commenced? I mean, we are seeing all the precursors to invasion. So we've seen the false flag operations. We've seen the cyber attacks. We've seen the troops uh, lined up on the border. Uh, we have seen, you know, the. But is, 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 is it a peacekeeping close to the border? I thought a so-called peacekeeping force had been deployed. A Russian peacekeeping force is—is is that incorrect? Putin, Putin has said they were going to be deployed. 
we have not yet seen the evidence of that on the ground and you know the word so-called is absolutely correct when we're talking about a peacekeeping force this is an invasion uh, force that we're talking about but we have not yet seen uh, that that take place no so the peacekeepers are not yet <laughs> the so-called peacekeepers have not yet been deployed in donbass is the understanding of the british government well the you know, this whole situation is full of disinformation from the Putin regime. Right. So I mean, you, are, you, you are aware of footage we, on social media, Foreign Secretary. Well, we, we do not have verified evidence that that has taken place yet. But you are aware, I think, from uh, what, yesterday? Or uh, even... What I'm saying is there is all kinds of fake material circulating on the internet. What we have to make sure is that our intelligence services are fully verifying uh, what is happening. There's no uh, and doubt... British intelligence currently no says doubt, that there, there's no uh, peacekeepers been well, deployed. Well, we, 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 the, the situation is currently ambiguous. Uh, we have to be absolutely clear uh, w w when that happens, and we will be clear when that has happened. There's no doubt in my mind that it's highly likely that there will be a full-scale invasion. Uh, it, it's very unlikely that isn't going to happen, and we are fully prepared... Uh, for that scenario, we're fully prepared with an even tougher sanctions package that targets even more individuals and banks, that targets uh, Russian activity in the uh, international financial markets. And we are working in concert with our allies. When I but we have not yet seen that full scale invasion yet, Nick. OK, thank you for that. When I, know, when I told my listeners you were coming on, there was a flurry of emails and questions. One I'll just put to you. Henry in Highbury, uh, should the football match go ahead in St. Petersburg, the UEFA final? What's your view? Yes no. or no? No. Simple as that. If an England team were to get through, should they boycott it? If I was on the England team, I would boycott it. So or you, on an English team, sorry. I mean, I have to say, if you were playing centre forward for Chelsea, it might interest some of the fans. List trust it would be an <laughs> it would be an interesting selection. But you you would urge the manager if they I've didn't. Never, I've never I've never had the call, Nick. <laughs> but I would personally. You could be having the call for many top jobs. List trust. Let's be I, honest I, about I, it. I I would personally not want to be playing in a football match in St Petersburg, given what the Putin regime is doing. And you would urge the manager to consider a boycott were an English team to be successful in the stages to get to the final? Yes. Mentioned Chelsea. Will Mr Abramovich, its owner, feature on any future list, Liz Truss? We have targeted three of Putin's closest friends and oligarchs in our most recent sanctions package that we announced yesterday. And we're only able to announce this package because... We put through legislation saying we can target anybody who is linked to the Putin regime uh, and is supporting the Putin regime and propping up the regime. And we are looking at anybody and nobody is off the table in terms of future sanctions. OK, last couple of questions. Two prominent politicians in the headlines, uh, one on your team, one on the other. Let's start with the opposing team. Sir Keir Starmer is suggesting that Russia Today, the television service, should effectively be banned from British screens. Is he correct, Liz Truss? Well, it is an appalling channel that pumps out Kremlin disinformation. Ultimately, it's a decision for Ofcom about whether Russia Today is following uh, the British broadcasting rules. Whilst I don't like uh, a lot of material that is pumped out by various media outlets, I do believe in free speech and we need to make sure that that is a decision by the independent regulator. And lastly, Moggy, I referred to Jacob Rees-Mogg, has said senior civil servants should re refrain from publicly supporting Black Lives Matter. It should be an apolitical service. Again, Foreign Secretary, would you concur? I do, I do agree that the civil service needs to uh, remain impartial uh, in what they do. Uh, I am concerned about the development of identity politics and the idea that um, you know, the group you're in is more important than what you believe are your talents. And you know, we are working to uh, make sure, and I, I laud Jacob Rees-Mogg for the job he's doing, to make sure that we don't have uh, the development of those type of identity politics within the civil service. Grateful for your time. Foreign Secretary Liz Truss appearing here on LBC, where at two minutes after eight, the news is next. On your radio, on Global Player and... Play LBC. Leading Britain's conversation. This 
is LBC. From Global's newsroom at 8 o'clock, Britain is facing calls to impose tougher sanctions in